Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be explaining the periodic table to you. So why the position of element are important, what the groups can tell us and what the periods can tell us. Because if you understand this, then you've come a long way in chemistry. Now, to help you make sure you do fully understand this and you are prepared to go into an exam, answering lots of questions on this topic, over on my website there's a free set of questions and a free set of flashcards to help you remember everything, along with the predicted papers that we've written for this year's exams and all of the live revision sessions that we're running. In this video we're going to look at the periodic table. In the periodic table the elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. This means as you move left to right across a row, the atomic number goes up by one each time. You can see this in the example here, starting with aluminium, moving all the way across to argon, we go from 13 to 18, going up by one each time. Elements that are in the same vertical column all have similar chemical properties to each other. For example, in this highlighted vertical column, they're all low density, highly reactive metals. We can annotate the periodic table to give us some more information about how to read this table with the horizontal rows and the vertical columns. If we add numbers down the side of the periodic table, this indicates the horizontal rows and these are called periods. Periods are the horizontal rows and they're indicated by the period number, which with just that number tells us which row the element would be found on. The period number also tells us how many electron shells an element has. It's important to remember that this doesn't tell us how many electrons an atom of this element has. It simply tells us how many shells an atom of that element has. If we look at this example here, we can see that this atom has two shells. That tells us it would be in period two, so the second row of the periodic table. The vertical columns can also be numbered, and these are referred to as the groups. The group number tells us how many electrons are on the outer shell of an atom of that element. If we look at this example here, this atom has four electrons on its outer shell. That tells us that it would be in group four, so we'd be looking for an element in the fourth column of the periodic table. So this means that period number and group number can act like coordinates to highlight an element on the periodic table. For example, if somebody told me that the element was on period 4, group 2, I would go to the fourth row down, second column across, and I'd learn that the element they were talking about was calcium. You may have noticed that there's a chunk in the middle of the periodic table that doesn't have a group number. These are the transition metals. You don't need to think about these elements at the moment, because we're going to come back to them in a later topic. These elements are quite special and have some unique properties we need to go through. The periodic table is actually so much more than just a table of elements. We can use what we know to make predictions. As I said previously, elements in the same column or the same group have similar chemical properties. This means they all react in a similar way with similar things. This means that if we know the chemical properties or how an element reacts within a group, we can make predictions for the other elements in that group that they'll react similarly. We can use the group 1 elements as a great example of this. For example, if we know that sodium is low density and reacts vigorously with water, we can make the prediction that the other elements within that group, such as lithium and potassium, will react the same if not similarly. Another great example of this is the group seven halogens. All of the elements within group seven are highly reactive non-metals, and they also share the property that they're all poisonous or toxic. We're now gonna look at the development of the periodic table. How was it developed and who by? The very early models of the periodic table sorted the elements based on their atomic mass, so their mass number, it's important to remember that these early models of the periodic table were being written before subatomic particles had been discovered. 
The early models of the periodic table often had a lot of gaps, and this is because the elements that needed to go into those gaps had not yet been discovered. This sometimes led to new elements that had just been discovered being fitted into gaps in the periodic table where they didn't really belong. Since the periodic table had not yet been fully developed, there was lots of different early versions from lots of different countries, and this proposed a problem for a lot of scientists as there was not one periodic table that they could all use. The periodic table we know and use today is Mendeleev's periodic table. The first draft of the periodic table we know today was written in 1869 by a Russian chemist called Dmitry Mendeleev. In this first draft, Mendeleev organised the elements into vertical columns, or groups as we know them now, based on their chemical properties. After he'd done this, he then tried to arrange those elements by their atomic mass in horizontal rows. Mendeleev found that when he then arranged them into these horizontal rows based on atomic mass, they naturally fell into the columns with other elements of similar chemical properties. A unique feature of Mendeleev's periodic table is that he left gaps. He did not try and fit other elements into these gaps, he left them empty. When he left these gaps empty, Mendeleev predicted that elements would later be discovered with the right chemical property and the right atomic mass to fit those gaps. In the many years that followed, elements were in fact discovered that did have the chemical property and atomic mass to fit in these gaps. This further proved that Mendeleev's order of the periodic table was correct. Isotopes were only discovered after Mendeleev had died. Because isotopes have a varying mass number, this explains some of the inaccuracies where Mendeleev had used the mass number to order the elements on the periodic table. In the years that followed, when protons were discovered, atomic number took over as being used to order the elements from left to right on the periodic table. The use of atomic number fixed any issues that were being caused by the presence of isotopes. The periodic table and Mendeleev's basic periodic table has been updated many times over the years. However, the updated version based on his drafts does still fit the predictions that he made at the time. Ouch! This is why in some videos I've unexplained scratches.